The U.S. Coast Guard and the Canadian Coast Guard are considered as one fleet. We have two main assets here with the Canadian Coast Guard, CCGS Griffin and the CCGS Sam Risley. They do have nine icebreakers in this region, U.S. Coast Guard, and they usually deploy them strategically from St. Mary's River to Western Basin on Lake Erie. They are sometimes able to go in space we cannot go due to the draft and the shallowness of the area. Some of our ice assets are smaller, maybe more nimble, and the Canadian assets provide the larger heavy icebreakers uh, in addition to um, the Cutter Mackinac for us, and it works really well. We use the heavier icebreakers in the thicker ice and the lighter icebreakers where they're needed. So you can often see U.S. breakers in Canadian waters and Canadian breakers in U.S. waters. They have two ice breaking assets. The U.S. brings nine uh, ice breaking, so a collective group of 11. Now some folks, they look at that imbalance and they say, well, geez, the Canadians aren't given their fair share. But if you look at, they're bringing two heavies to the lakes where we bring one, our smaller assets. If we work independent of one another, Canada doesn't have what they need to do their mission, and we independent wouldn't have enough to do what we need to do for our mission. So collectively is how we get everything done in the Great Lakes. You can't foresee when assets may have critical failures or have to go in for repairs, and so relying on each other is really important. It gives us a great deal of flexibility, and it really has helped us to really keep the waterways open. We can always look across the, the waterway and uh, get help if we need it.